are you? I'm great. How about you? Good. Usually uh, we're meeting uh, somewhere in a fun part of the world. It's nice to be uh, meeting actually uh, in our hometown. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. So excited to be back up here with you guys. Uh, and uh, really talking, I think, now about how do we how do we put some of these uh, solutions into action, right? Yep. And um, and I thought just for a little fun, we might bring uh, <laughs> an, an AI along with us. Uh, so um, we recently Nvidia uh, recently announced uh, uh, something called a, a blueprint, uh, Nvidia Nim blueprint uh, that you know, allows you to put together uh, digital humans. Uh, and uh, James is the uh, James is this guy. I'm uh, let's, here. James, you're out there. Quiet. Let me adjust my audio settings. All right. So James is with us. Uh, so James, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, Nvidia and Amdocs. Uh, you know, what's what's what we're what, what are we doing here today on the stage? Nvidia and Amdocs are collaborating to develop AI-powered solutions for the telecommunications industry. Good. You got a question for James? I'm nervous. <laughs> Uh, James, so why is it so important that we're collaborating? It's crucial for telcos to optimize operations and enhance customer experiences, driving business growth and competitiveness. It seems so, like uh, next well. year our digital twins might replace us, but <laughs> not needed anymore. Exactly. That's all good. So maybe, maybe Chris, um, we'll start with NVIDIA a little bit on a more serious note. You know, um, it's been spending a little bit of time in the last uh, year and a half, uh, especially in the last two weeks. You guys showed us some uh, really cool stuff over in San Francisco. Maybe you want to share a little bit about maybe a little broader, even outside of Telco. Yeah, absolutely. So I think most of you guys know NVIDIA has been at this AI uh, space for a long, long time. Um, and, you know, back in I guess it was in you know, about six years ago, you know, we delivered the first AI purpose built compute infrastructure to OpenAI to, to really uh, enable them to build their large language model uh, foundation model that's out there that everybody knows as, as ChatGPT. So, so we've been at this for a very long time, making sure we're providing the ecosystem capabilities. But one of the unique things that NVIDIA does is we go to market vertically, right? And so my job at NVIDIA is to is really look at how can we apply AI and accelerate computing to the telco vertical, but we've got many that have the same type of responsibility across our company. And so what I'll share is a, is a quick video of how are we applying AI across all the different domains that are out there. And I think a couple things to think about, you know, one, obviously telcos serve most of these customers uh, today. So you can kind of understand how our different industries from healthcare to financial services to energy are using this type of technology. And then the second thing I want to encourage you to take away is that you're going to see st some things in the video that, that apply and can be applied directly back into yep. the telco. So a dovetail coming back in. Exactly. So we'll run the video and then we'll come back. I am a visionary. Illuminating galaxies to witness the birth of stars. And sharpening our understanding of extreme weather events. I am a helper. Guiding the blind through a crowded world. I was thinking about running to the store. And giving voice to those who cannot speak. Do not make me laugh. Love. I am a transformer. Harnessing gravity to store renewable power. And paving the way towards unlimited clean energy for us all. I am a trainer. Teaching robots to assist. To watch out for danger. And help save lives. 
I am a healer, providing a new generation of cures and new levels of patient care. Doctor, that I am allergic to penicillin. Is it still okay to take the medications? Definitely. These antibiotics don't contain penicillin, so it's perfectly safe for you to take them. I am a navigator. Generating virtual scenarios to let us safely explore the real world and understand every decision. I even help write the script. Breathe life into the words in muchos idiomas. Y escribí la música. I am AI. Brought to life by NVIDIA. Deep learning. And brilliant minds. Everywhere. Yeah, so we're getting to work on, so thank you. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing and getting to work on incredible opportunities. I think, I think our, our CEO always says that we want to tackle the biggest, hardest problems and challenges of the world and find a way to bring our technology to help ch change that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, very exciting to kind of see how it's really cutting across industry. And, and obviously, you know, one of the things we're very excited about is then how do we then take this into telco and bring all this amazing capability to, to transform the way telcos can run their operations, create new customer experiences, drive new revenues, drive next generation networks. Um, so, you know, Anthony, you know, we obviously have been working together very closely, you know, for, you know, I think the last couple of years now, and, and but you guys have got in early on Gen AI as part of your journey as well. So you wanna share a little bit about kind of where, what you guys are doing uh, in this space? Yeah, sure. And, and you know, just to comment on, on the video, you know, sometimes like if you if you roll back the clock and think about five, six years ago, you'd watch a video like that and go, oh, wow, that's like science fiction. But <laughs> it's crazy, right? I mean, it's reality today. I mean, you know, we're, we're working together on a project on around digital twins for towers and things like that, which is taking something from another vertical, applying in the telco sector. So this is exactly. like reality today. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, getting getting back to what we're doing, yeah, I mean, we've been we've been working together with you guys for for quite a while now, and um, you know, part of it's also disrupting some of the stuff that we do and really trying to rethink what an experience looks like, um, and not just about playing around on the edges and trying to tweak it because you know we see some really good results we want to solve. So you know, with our Maze framework, we've been working very closely with your R and D teams all the way from workload management to intent management to inferencing all the way to the top and just bringing those two together um, and just creating some amazing results. And, and that's, I think, what I'm excited about, you know, taking these science projects and actually putting it in production and seeing what, you know, comes out of it. Totally agree. I, I, I think, you know, so why don't we, you know, double click into one of the most recent engagements yeah. we had. So we, you know, so we were working very closely with a with a North American uh, provider um, on improving the customer care experience, uh, you know, specifically around billing, um, and you know we really worked hard to kind of bring the best of NVIDIA together, you know, with with Amdocs to be able to create this solution, you know, using all of your maze frameworks, but also underpinning it with all of our capabilities, everything from data curation, you know, up through the inferencing of the models. So why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, the results that we got out of this? Yeah, and this is, you know, this was really exciting. I mean, to tell you the truth, I, I think neither of us expected these types of results. You know, we've been in technology for, you know, decades now, uh, seeing these types of results in production, in real life. Um, I'm sure most of you guys know, you know, generally there are kind of three KPIs that people are usually looking for in any type of operation center, right? It's usually how long am I handling a call? What's my first call resolution? Does it impact, you know, does the person walk away feeling happy about it, right? And usually it's very hard to positively impact all three <laughs> at the same time, right? Usually you're like, hey, like I just want to like hang up the phone really quickly and then like the person's not happy or the other way around. And, and even though, you know, we're going to a stage where this may not even be needed and it'll be fully autonomous, so we're going to 
go, I, I would say, kind of crawl, walk, run stage. The results are phenomenal, right? Like it's double digit, you know, reduction in average handling time, more than 50%, right? First call resolution, you're cutting this in half. Um, and then they're walking away happy, right? The, net, exactly. the transactional net promoter score is up, right? So, I mean, when you look at these results, you know, it, it's hard to argue with it, right? I mean, you can argue with technology, you can argue with pricing, you can argue with all sorts of things, but when you look at the end result, it's really difficult. But it's not just this, right? I mean, you and I spend a lot of time going, okay, here's the business results, but people would go, oh, but you know, here's what it cost me for a transaction, what does it cost me on the other side? So there are some key technical KPIs we keep a close eye on. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we want to make sure is, are we doing this, you know, cost effective? Are we doing yeah. it, you know, the most performant? And these were also some very staggering, you know, good results that came from this. Uh, you know, we, we worked together to take um, and customize a, an open source model, uh, and we're able to fine tune that and, and create, you know, several big benefits. One, a 60% reduction in the amount of tokens used to provide the answer, and that translates directly through to cost, because yep. you're paying a cost per token, um, versus it being on a, being on a, a larger model. Uh, the second thing is that we actually were able to tune the model to be 30% more accurate than taking a generic model in the market uh, and, and basically getting a 30% lift in accuracy. But the one that I'm really excited about is this last one, uh, which is we also saw an 80% improvement in latency. So when you think about this, this is, a, this is actually working and giving coaching to a representative about what to say you know, with regard to a billing inquiry coming in. And when you think about if, if this takes 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds to provide the, to provide the feedback back, that's not very useful. It's, it's not a natural flow. So you've got to get to real time, close to real time you know, inferencing of the requests in order to make it work in that type of environment, getting this huge latency. Yeah. Was and, and I was going to say, just, just one comment on this, you know, one of the things I think that we also challenging our teams is, you know, what you do on Monday may not be valid on Friday, right? So we're constantly benchmarking all our large language models. Sometimes we see versions released and sometimes we have to go back to a previous version because, you know, it, it's much, much better speed wise, you know. Um, we bake, break up transactions between different large language models because fit for purpose is really the right thing. It's not just about, you know, just getting a bunch of documents and hoping RAG works and throwing it in and, and getting a result. So it's a really intentional effort all the way from the top, all the way down to workload management, right? Intent routing. Exactly. Um, so exactly. I, I think the fact that we're paying attention to those things really solves some problems that people have con real concerns about. Today. Absolutely. And I think the other thing that came out was there's some other parts that often get thrown up as you know, barriers or challenges as we go through the process. And I think we learned several other things kind of going through these steps, you know, in this particular deployment. So you want to talk a little bit about some other pieces that we saw, you know, as far as coming yeah, out? Yeah, look, I think as an industry, you know, every one of our customers has such high brand equity, right? So trusted AI is not something that we can play games with, right? So I think we, we put a lot of attention to this, putting like the guard, the correct guardrails around it, right? We handle so much PII data, so privacy is very critical to us. Um, all the way from you know things like confidential computing on how you move data around. By the way, it's not just on an application layer. So we kind of reimagine what trusted AI could look like right from the core, rather than afterthought. And I think this was really important. Absolutely, it's critical. And um, so you know, maybe I'll ask James uh, another question here. Um, uh, you know, when we think, um, you know, where where do we really think the the right focus is as you know for for telcos as we're looking at the places to place those bets and what's kind of next? So, James, what do you think about what what really is next? I'd say that improving customer experiences will be the most important generative AI topic in the future of telecom, as it's already the biggest AI opportunity for the industry. All right, so I think he's right on this. I think we, you know, we're already seeing some of this being brought out, but I think the one of the big new trends we see is something that is being called agentic AI, and the actual idea of creating specialty agents that 
know their craft really, really well and are able to then execute around that. And so you might have a master, you know, t you know, request coming in, but then that can be doled out to, to these individual agents that are custom trained to do their task really, really well. And I, what I'm excited about is actually Amdocs' vision about where you guys are trying to take this. So you want to talk a little bit about? Yeah, uh, sure. The, the, so, so, you know, this, this same notion that you've been talking about, about these agent personas, right? Yeah. So we are really doubling down, making sure, you know, from a training perspective of fine tuning the learnings we get from inferencing. Clearly, you know, we've been in this industry for a while. You know, you take something like something as simple as proration, right? You go, well, okay, I get proration. But there are so many different entities this touches, right? So, so training the model to understand exactly what the impact is, where it's coming from, and every agent will kind of understand that notion. But not just that, they'll be able to talk to each other, right? So the intent routing and be able to exchange. And by the way, we also believe that it's not one size fits all, right? There are hybrid models, so there, there could be, we are designing with one customer a super agent model, yep. right? So um, th there's this notion of, you know, we'll be working together in many customers and different people are coming at it with different ways. But I think this is the future. It's a modular approach. And, you know, Sam Altman talks about this thing about, you know, okay, you have personas now. The next level is organization. And we're already starting to see and think about, well, what does that organization hierarchy look like? Yep. It's not just designing your organization from a human resource perspective, but how does your AI organization look like? And that's where we're spending a lot of time right now. Exactly. I, and, I, and I'm excited because, again, with the collaboration, you know, Amdocs is really kind of working at the forefront with NVIDIA to, to take some of the latest and greatest capabilities and figure out how can we apply them, yep. you know, in this space. And, and whether it's, uh, you know, you know, coming up with the, the right agentic workflows, uh, the right digital human, you know, capabilities. Yeah. These are all things that we're really exploring, I think, together to then bring out to the industry. Because I think one of the big things, too, is that there's also all these different the way this is going to really unlock the most potential is, is how to have all these things also coordinate across all the different data sets that the telcos you know, do have from the network data right. to the care data, to the retail data, you know, all these uh, to the billing, all these different places. You know, when you can start mashing all this together to create a really truly personal and experience. And being able to reuse these components, right? So the key thing I think that, that we're trying to do is give people the right components, the right tooling to really be able to reuse it wherever they want exactly. within their framework. Um, I think it's exciting to see what what's going to come up. Yeah, and I and you know I think it's you know the last piece I'd say is just you know this is this is also hard, all right? This is yeah. this is hard work, yeah. um, and it and it it's really critical we get it right. Uh, and and I would say that one of the things I also like is that. Amdocs is such a trusted you know, partner to the telco industry um, as being a hardened, trusted platform and to really unlock the full potential of these AI so solutions, they, they have to be at that level, right? They have to be, you know, carrier grade, right? right? And and I and 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 trusted that they will do the we right thing. We don't have thing, a choice, right? right? And, I mean, that's... and and I think you guys bring that capability to make that a reality. And so we're so excited about the collaboration and what we're doing together. Yeah, it's been fun. I I, I think generally, I mean, outside of our companies, I think it's really exciting to see where all of this is going to go. Um, you know, I always like I, I try to pride myself. I say, you know, in my role and what I do, I always try to keep up with things. But it's like it's crazy the pace of acceleration. Um, I, I was telling you the other day. I think I I heard this um, uh, interview between James Cameron and Bill Gates, and James Cameron was saying, you know, when I used to write movies on science fiction, you know, I write it, they produce it. It takes like a year and a half to get out. By the time it gets out, it's already old now. You know, and that's how fast technology is moving. So it's a it's a great time to live. It is. It's so exciting. So again, we're. We look forward to you know, continue to bring the innovation together, and uh, thank you guys so much for the opportunity to share thank you. how we're imp implementing this. Thank you.